Good afternoon, mga puso. We are back inside the Philo and Echo Center right here in San Juan City. This is the opening day of the NCAA Season 99 Volleyball Tournament. My name is Martin Avier. Of course, I'm working alongside to napakasipag po. Kakatapos sa mag-cover ng second game natin kanina. Going to game on right away, right after. One table to another. Of course, we have Mr. Pure Business and Ton Ross and Coach Hammer. Martin Antonio. Gentlemen, how are you? Brother, it's great to be back. I miss this. It's been more than two months since we've last had the opportunity mm -hmm. to cover the NCAA and be here back on the show. We've got a lot of plans for the first uh, portion of uh, this uh, year for with regards to the NCAA. It was just announced on social media, ang atin bagong Game On podcast. So that's one of the things that we will be talking about in this edition of the show, and of course, the matches that we just witnessed dito sa opening day ng NCAA Women's Volleyball at Men's Volleyball. Masaya tayo, lalong lalo na sa podcast natin, kasi si, minsan si Coach Hammer yung bida sa yun mga topics yun natin. Yun 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 Dahil alam mo naman ako, alam mo naman ako, default lang yung mga wardrobe ko. But again, uh, it's it's a great opportunity for us that uh, we're still here covering the NCAA. Volleyball naman ngayon, and we'll be having a new platform to talk about uh, a lot of sports, a lot of things under the sun. So, we're really blessed. That's right. Uh, yes, we are really blessed. Just announced via the social media of GMA News, GMA Sports, will be, you know, hosting the newest podcast of GMA Network. It's called Game On. Of course, that's the extension of this particular show. So we'll have longer conversations there. We will have wider topics to talk about, wider subjects to talk about. We'll have guests, different athletes, not just NCAA athletes, not just basketball athletes, pero iba ibang sports po ang uh, ating guests yan or, or ating aabangan. Pero pag-usapan muna po natin yung mga naging laban ngayong araw na to. It has been an eventful opening day of women's volleyball, men's volleyball. Nakakaisang game pa lamang tayo. Nag-warm up yung second game natin between Perpetual and JRU. But we gotta go first to the men's division kung saan po bininyagan tayo ng isang five-setter. <laughs> Pipset agad. <laughs> Pipset to start the season. Uh, EAC defeating the Benil Blazers, taking care of business right there. They were a Final Four squad last season. So, antabayan na natin kung paano magbibuild up ulit itong EAC. Papasok. Dahil lagi silang kinakapusok. Kap kapos pagpapasok na ng finals. Pero, mm -hmm. nakakuha na yun isang championship dito sa NCAA. Antabayan na natin. I'm just so happy to see familiar faces nung pumasok sa court yung Perpetual Altas. Our favorite player. Natin agad. Si Kurt the Train uh, Rosos nagparamdam agad and Coach Sandy Rieta was like, player ko yan, MVP, MVP yan. MVP junior. And, and he also said na harang siya ng bilyar eh. Oh. <laughs> Hindi basketball. <laughs> harang ng bilyar. <laughs> Akala natin, ano eh, basketball player sa haba ng shorts. Uh, pero bilyar pala. No, but seriousness, aside, uh, all jokes aside, uh, us being serious, he was a hell of a player in high school, and I think now he's going to get more minutes yep. in the seniors division. Because he is in way better shape. For this season, he si Kurt Rosos last uh, season. He gained a lot of weight Coach Sandy Rieta. But now, most of these guys are in the tip-top shape. Ang Perpetual Altas trying for another championship and looking like the team to beat in the men's division. Iba yung term mo dun eh. Mas lumaki yung kaha. Di ba yun yung kay... Lumapad. Lumapad. Oo, oh, di ba? Yun yung term ni Coach Hammer. But that's great news especially for Perpetual fans. Again, they're gunning for another championship. I like the nickname, The Train. Yeah, may tarp pa yan. May tarp pa, The Train. Akala mo si Barbie San Andres lang yung may tarp? <laughs> Si Kurt Rosos may tarp din. Si Thomas the Train. Thomas the Train eh. May at picture least, tayo. At, at least uh, it wasn't uh, uh, the diesel. Oh, uh, okay. okay, uh, okay. Uh, <laughs> and then, uh, but I mean, all jokes aside, nasabi nga natin, we're just really glad that the NCAA volleyball season is in full swing right now on our first day. And two really good teams in the women's division debuted today yeah. looking like contenders. Okay, dagdag ko lang dun sa men's division before we let it go. 
yung Benil Blazers much improved this season. Ang pinanggit sa akin ni Coach Arnold last year, na late sila ng preparation dun sa men's division. Kaya last year, hindi pa masyadong peak yung team nila. They had a full off season. Tapos lahat dong nagre-residency na players nila nakapasok na ngayon kompleto sila. They challenged EACO. Again, is a perennial Final Four team here in the NCAA men's scene. All right. So you mentioned already Coach Hammer in the women's division this time. First game. I cover this game with Miss Gaira Baroga. Na nandito tayo sa Phil Oil. Diba sa Phil Oil tayo. Oh, nakita ko yung picture dun sa ano? Sa pader. Sabi ko, partner ko yung kanina, si Miss Gaira. Okay. Did a great job, by the way. But it was the Benil Lady Blazers who are you know, gunning for the three-peat this year. Make, they want to make history for the school. They won over the EAC Lady Generals convincingly. At least first two sets, 25-15, 25-14. Third set, EAC was able to keep it close. Ultimately, the defending champs, they were just too much in this particular game. It's so crazy how this team has won 30 straight matches in NCAA Women's Volleyball. They have not lost since 2019. I asked Gaira um, when we were going to take over from you guys who impressed her the most. Sabi niya, Mitch Gamit. And last year, it was a question mark. It was up in the air as to whether babalik pa si Mitch Gamit. But I'm so happy to see her here and shining for the Benil Lady Blazers who are trying to establish a dynasty. Sabi nga ni Coach Hammer kanina, two championships is not a dynasty yet. It's gotta be three. And that is the mission for Coach Jerry Yee here in Season 99. They have the demeanor. They have the preparation. They have the tools to get another sweep. But of course, itong mga koponan in the women's tournament also prepared well for this season. Tsaka syempre, hope springs eternal pagkasimula ng... Uh, competition. So, antabayan na natin sino pa yung mga bagong challengers para dyan sa corona ng Benil Blazers. You know what's scary in this match? Starting unit ng Benil Lady Blazers, they didn't have Jade Hentapa. She came off the bench here. Sila yung nagpalitan dito. Ito ni Gail Pascual. Binababad si Jade. Pinapalitan ni Gail. Tapos, ang nagahalin hinan. Michael Go was just, you know, used, I think, in the second set. Very sparingly in this match. There. How did she look though, brother? Okay naman, trying to get into game speed, oh, get used to game speed again. Pero they're taking it slowly. I think they won't force Maika to produce right away, to contribute what she used to contribute when she was MVP. I think they'll try to bring her along very slowly here. But that's what's scary here. I, we, we saw Willin Estoque earlier. We saw Jess Adorov, much improved. Those two, nakita natin yung depensa last year. Diba? Lalong lalo floor defense, yung reception. Ngayong year, yung atake nila, mas pulido na. So, mas lumalim ang rotation ngayon ni Coach Jerry. Well, yun naman talaga eh. Nakita natin throughout the offseason, nakapag-recruit din ang Benil Blazers. And last toward the latter part of season 98, binigyan na ni Coach Jerry ng pagkakataon maglaro yung mas maraming players dun sa kanyang rotation. Kaya yung... Pagpasok, ito yung pinakamalakas nilang team eh. Mm. I think ah. Wow. Dahil nagkaroon, nagkaroon na sila ng experience yeah. and Micah go coming back. Ang laking bagay nun with her being set into the fold. Kasi nagkaroon ng experience eh. Di ba sila, yung mga players nila dati, si Pascual lang inaasahan. Si Gamit had an off year last year, up and down yung kanyang nilalaro. So, if she impressed Gaira mm. in uh, this uh, first game, they might be a stronger team this year compared to last season. Hammer, <laughs> dropping the bomb, I know. dropping the hammer I know. in you our know. very first you, you episode, to... declaring oh. that this edition might of the Benil Lady be. Blazers might be. is the strongest might ever. Be. Might be you, their you strongest. You said earlier, now no, you're might be saying their, might be. No, okay. might be their strongest okay, ever because okay. and dami nilang holdovers, tapos nagamit na nila yung mga holdovers nila. May experience na not only in the NCAA, but also in the semi-pro ranks. That's so right. malaking bagay yun. I don't know. For me, I think it was the MVP year of Micah Go. That was one. the first the strongest so far. But you know, like Martin said, they're bringing her back in slowly, and we might see, you know, a newer, wiser version of Micah Go later in the season. Oh, and that's what? what I'm praying for, also. Sa maganda makita pa naman nag-adapt yung laro niya after coming off an injury. Siempre magkakaroon ng variation yung laro niya. Ani mga idadagdag niya para hindi niya kargahan masado 
yung mga ginagawa niya previously, right. ano pa yung mga facets ng game niya yung may na-improve niya throughout that prolonged off season. At syempre, dapat alalahanin natin, you know, she had a full season last year watching from the sidelines, you know, as an assistant coach, lots of learnings there. Diba? Iba yung nakikita mo yung laro, nakikita mo kung saan kayo pwede mag-improve, saan ka pwede mag-contribute when you come back to the court. Sabihin ko lang ha, yeah. yung una niyang sinabi, yung pagkakasabi niya nung una. Might be, might in, be. In, de, 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 pagkasabi niya nung una, in passing lang eh. Tapos nung sinabi ni Anton bigla na, oh, oh, oh. Naging ano na eh, co convincing declaration. Oh, medyo may authority na. Uh, pero, yeah, you, you, you got a good point. This, they're, they're intact this year. They have a very deep lineup. So, abangan niyo po yan. EAC Lady Generals, though. I think this team, okay, their strength is floor defense. Uh, just like their men's team. Mm -hmm. Pero earlier they showed some fight, especially in that third set. Mas naging pulido na rin yung mga wingers sila, yung mga attackers sila. Even one middle, Jaja Villena, contributed a lot. But they still need to polish a lot more to their game and maybe add more pieces for them to win some games. Pero, pero dahil dun sa floor defense nila, they will stay within range against the strongest teams in the yep. league. Meron, ever since naman may depensa talaga sila eh. Uh, throughout the past few years, yan ay naging uh, trademark ng coaching staff ng EAC. Nabanggit mo Martin, both in the men's and the women's competition, they're really up there when it yep. comes to floor defense, digs and receptions. Ang laging tanong, saan man gagaling yung mga puntos? Sino ba yung ace attacker nila? Yeah. Sino yung pupuntahan at pupuntahan ng kanilang opensa? I think as established, it's Kat Almazan at si Crisia Reyes. Pero kailangan pa nila ng tulong, kailangan pa nila ng suporta. Okay, now let's head to the second game which you guys came from and covered. By the way, I will make a sweeping declaration that this is my favorite volleyball panel duo. <laughs> why? <laughs> Anthony, why? Why not? Why not? You know? Bakit? Ayan. De, pero second game natin. <laughs> Perpetual and JRU, and it was a convincing win for the Perpetual Lady Altas. They want to avenge their disappointing, I would say, disappointing ending to season 98 because they were expecting to at least enter the finals last season. Yeah, natalo sila sa final four dun tayo sa step ladder against LPU. So, might be out for revenge this year. Etong Perpetual Lady Altas, yeah, it's unfinished business for Mary Rose Dapol and Coach Sandy Rieta and the gang because last year was one of their best seasons ever in terms of the elimination round. Eight and one, they only lost to Benil. So the expectation was they would dominate the stepladder semis and advance for a rematch, a showdown with the Benil Lady Blazers. But in the stepladder semifinals, they did not look like themselves. Admittedly, talking to Coach Sandy Rieta before the game, sabi niya, na shock sila pagdating nila dito sa mas malaking venue. They were not ready for the moment and LPU was able to make their first finals ever. But this year, they have the experience, they have the momentum, mas matapang sila, and we saw it in this very first match. And given more time to prepare, that's one thing. At saka pinuno kasi nila yung Phil Oil Echo Oil Center nung naglaro sila in that step ladder. Natapat din sila dun sa LPU na nakakuha ng buwelo against Mapua. And then, papasok, kalaban sila, meron ng momentum. So, malaking bagay yun. But, again, the usual suspects are there for uh, the Lady Altas, Dapol, Omipon. And, uh, kanina, mas maganda yung pagsasets ni Sapin. So, marami silang nakuha mga magaganda plays. At napansin namin na yun, mas marami silang itinatakbong plays. Mas different uh, looks pagdating sa kanilang opensa. Mukha bang mas buo na sila this year? Would you say they're at the level of the Benilde Lady Blazers in terms of, you know, just being whole as a team? I would say they are deeper this mm. year. Kanina, last year's best libero did not play because she's injured. She has uh, knee pains. So, hindi siya nakapaglaro, although she was suited up. But the backup libero stepped up. And another player who I've been saying it throughout the coverage, very underrated, Number 15 last year in the MVP race, Winnie Bedanya. Mm. If she and Razel Aldea, si Ate Dea, if they can elevate their game this year, 
I think they are going to give the Benil Lady Blazers a run for their money. Wow. Yeah. Okay. I can. I will go as far as to say that if if the middle blockers can elevate their game, I think they will be the key mm -hmm. to matching the level of the defending champions. She is so underrated, pati siya nagulat. Mm -hmm. Nakasama siya dun sa MVP conversation. Kasi binanggit kanina ni Anton dahil open notes kami kanina. Binanggit ni Anton that she was part of that MVP conversation at number 15. Tinanong ni Anton, alam mo ba na number 15 nga siya? Hindi niya rin, hindi hindi niya rin daw alam. So at least with her uh, breakout game, so to speak, first time niya naging best player of the game sa competition in the NCAA, might open a lot of eyes and even her confidence para makapagdagdag ng different facets sa kanilang laro. Okay. Last na lang. Because I feel like the rebuild will continue for the JRU Lady Bombers. You know, a lot of young players in this team brought by Coach uh, Mia Choseco. Ano yung napansin nyo kanina? Who has potential of being the next Shola Alvarez? Meron bang nakikita ng potential? Makikita mo na they have that fight. They uh -huh. have that fight in them. Number 11, number 8, uh, their middle blocker, Batara. Was uh, very competitive, very competitive. Uh, Magisa lang siya na malaki don in the front line, but she didn't back down. Kahit kay Dapol, um, they have two very impressive uh, liberos. Nandudun pa rin si Inday Laurente. So, merong mga piesa. They have very athletic um, attackers, pero bata pa. Tama yung ginamit mo, Martin. Eh. Para makakuha ka ng ganung talent, you need, to, you, know, you need to give it time. Kailangan bigyan mo ng pagkakataon to improve. You need to. Let them grow into their game, so to speak. As I said earlier in the coverage, the crown is kind of up for grabs. I mean, by default, it's the team captain, May Ruiz, but it's hard to find a player in the mold of Ashola Alvarez and the Dolly Versosa. Right now, in terms of the open spiker position, it's Hasareno who is getting most of the sets, but very far away from that level of a Versosa and an Alvarez queen bomber level. I think um, it's going to be very hard to find for JRU. Yeah, and what's going to make it tougher for the Lady Bombers this season, yung nag-hold sa kanila together last year, which is Sid Niegos. Of course, graduated already, wala na this season. So they will need to find that leader, that new leader on the court to bring them some wins right here in season 99. Okay, mga kapusa, dami na namin napag-usapan, di ba? That's just, you know, the games today, and of course, that's a glimpse of what you guys can expect in the podcast. Obviously, we have a wider uh, range of topics to talk about. Pero NCAA, siyempre, ang pag-uusapan natin dito sa ating show ngayon. Okay, pagpapatuloy po natin ang pagpapakilala uh, ba sa mga volleyball team captains natin. Ngayon, okay, let's watch this. For the team, uh, we prepare like, syempre, we want to be uh, physically conditioned and mentally prepared for this season. Lahat naman po ng teams is nag-prepare for this coming season, like us din po, na um, we really, like, we all want to be at the top naman. So, syempre, um, wala akong, lahat naman po ng teams, syempre, like, di ba, kailangan din ng hard work. The back row! Momento para sa EAC. Good dig by Alonia. So pinagandaan po namin yung season na to. Um, Nag-focus kami more on skills namin. Siyempre sa training. Mas better kami sa than last season. Makikita nyo na mas, uh, mas pag-iigihan namin na mag-strive pa more pataas. Kasi nga um, nasa bottom kami. So mas ipupush namin yung team namin pataas. Ito yung sign to Amante. And yes, they will... Oh, what keeps them going? Simple lang naman daw ang kanilang sagot. At ito ang isa't isa. Lahat maaabangan, lalong-lalo po yung mga rookies namin. Um, kasi malaki yung tiwala namin sa kanila. Sa lahat po ng mga sumusuporta sa amin, maraming maraming salamat po sa walang sawa ninyong suporta. At pinapangako po namin na gagawin po namin yung best namin this season. We've seen one of the best uh, rookie classes of... Uh for NCAA and uh, both of these teams have these prized rookies. May mga makikita kayong new faces that will really um, contribute to the team. The rookies, especially of course, um, yung mga 
batang-bata namin na pero pag sumalang makikita mo na may pusong palaban talaga. Grabe yung power! Simula pa lang pero napakalakas na getting one for uh, the Papua Lady Cardinals. Sobrang laking adjustment din po yung ginawa namin sa team. Um, since puro bata nga po yung team namin ngayon. So, mas mas kailangan namin nag-double time sa effort namin. I'm proud to say na palaban po yung mga rookies namin this season. Alam namin na pag sinalang sila sa court, gagawin po nila yung best nila. And those are the team captains of NCAA Season 99 Women's Volleyball. We got very interesting team captains. Maraming nag- Palit, marami nagpasa ng uh, tip captain responsibilities. I want to point out, beneath Lady Blazers, because it's Jessa Dorog now, who's the team captain, leading her Atis. <laughs> it's a loaded team. They have a lot of veterans. It's very interesting that a second-year player, third-year player. A second, third-year player. Underclassmen. Oh, oh. underclassmen yung magiging kapitan nila. Yeah, that surprised me actually. I thought it was going to be Jade. I was basing it on the poster, the heroes poster. But yun nga, when I was given the list of captains, Jessa Dorog. Um, I'm not sure what the motive behind this was, but yeah, that's a huge responsibility being that you have to lead your ates. And maybe Coach Jerry is looking towards the future. Yeah. I mean, you want to leave, uh, you want to somebody na pagka-graduate ng mga seniors would have that DNA, would have that culture of leadership para ma-sustain yung program. Okay. Last na lang, before we go to our opening here, ang ganda ng off-season natin. You know, a lot of news uh, in the off-season. Yung mga bagong coaches natin sa NCAA, of course, implementing better programs. Kaya ka panapanabik. Kaabang-abang talaga itong Season 99. Daming players na kinuha at na-recruit. You know, priced blue-chip recruits from the provinces as well. So, ano ba sasabi niyo doon? Because we have a few teams who really retooled and, you know, paid attention to their volleyball programs. So, we have two new coaches. Sa San Beda Lady Red Spikers, the dad of Gaira, yeah. Coach Edgar Baroga. So excited to see what type of impact and what type of system he will be implementing for San Beda. I don't know, maybe this guy here has some inside information. He probably has. <laughs> Which he will, once again, keep close to his chest. No, 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 no. <laughs> and of course, I am so happy for this man. I am so happy that we will be closely interacting and covering him again. Coach Oliver Almadro. A homecoming for Coach O. Letran ng kanyang alma mater, Mart. So for him to, well, he has a busy schedule still because he's also coaching the University of the Philippines. So now that he's coaching Letran, siempre ibang sense of pride yan. Mm. Eh. You're mm. coaching your alma mater, and I'm just so happy that Coach Oliver has come home because naikita natin nanuno siya ng NCAA volleyball. So for him to actually. Coach a team, yeah. I'm so excited. I, I I don't know what kind of you know system because alam natin yung uh, coach oh you know uh, the the energy that he instills to his players, the discipline and focus. I'm excited to see the coach O effect sa Letran Lady Knights. Okay, so coach O yes will be debuting. When when, when is he debut? Maybe Tuesday or Wednesday uh, this week po sa <laughs> season natin. Okay. So, we mentioned earlier, it has been an eventful opening day of your women's volleyball tournament and the men's volleyball tournament. So, ito po yung mga nangyari sa ating opening day of Season 99 Volleyball. So, in our opening, of course, the NCAA Management Committee was present here, Dr. Lorenzo Lorenzo from EAC. And what's interesting here, siyempre nandiyan ang ating Chairman Sir Paul Supan, is that all of the teams were here. Boys, Girls Division, of course, Sir Oliver, Victor Amoroso, 
Senior Vice President of our GMA Network, Sir Hercules Calianta. Present yung boys team, present yung girls team, men's team, women's team from all of the member schools. You know, it's so crazy how time flies. I, I fondly remember one of the NCAA volleyball openings that I hosted, and Shola Alvarez was playing in her final year. Alam mo naman ako minsan, guys, ano ako eh, as a host, may mga impromptu akong ginagawa, mm. yung lalapitan ko bigla yung player. <laughs> and then I would ask a question, and I remember Shola Alvarez, the Queen Bomber, was so shocked that I was asking her a question on opening day. And that was the year na naging MVP siya. Ah, oh. So, I mean, Marts, today you hosted it. Uh, you had a front row seat to the new chapter for these athletes. For you, like, uh, what stood out? Well, I talked to Louis Ramirez, okay. but we won't be surprised if he ends up MVP again. So, uh, but what stood out for me was that, you know, everybody was here. What stands out for me is that guy with the shades <laughs> over there. <laughs> In the venue. Oh, this is what stood out. Doc hey. Ian Laurel. Hey, our old friend, Doc Ian. Yeah, giving the inspirational speech. And of course, our guest speaker today, or earlier rather, in our opening ceremony. Of course, we had one big photo. Bibihira po to. Usually, it's just the collegiate teams. Marami ba? Marami silang naka-shades. Okay. Puso pala yun. Teka. Puso pala yun. Sige na nga. Okay. That's what happened in our day number one of the competition opening ceremony of the NCAA Season 99 Volleyball Tournament. Very eventful. Before that, we had the men's game. After that, we had a couple of games in the women's division. But more to come. Dito po sa ating show, we still have a few VTRs and a few topics to talk about as well. All right, wakang alis. Magbabalik po ang Game On! Congratulations to San Beda's football team na nagsiselebrate. May gumagano, no? Woo! Woo! Napanood yung finals match ng Benil at San Beda. Ang hirap kasi nung pinagdaanan nila. Kasi ako personally, since I know the program, they've been champions for the longest time. Time pa nila, Coach Aris Kaslib. And then si Coach Chris, they lost. The Red Booters lost in the first round. Won in the second round. Rubber match, extended time. And goal after the third minute. And all of the Bedan athletes were there. Pag pinap pinapanood online, somebody was streaming from the alumni. Nakatwa isipin kasi yung mga athletes from both squads were supporting both of their teams. So magendang magendang example yon. And it's a test case para talaga sa mga atleta na student athletes supporting each other. Okay. During that video, I felt for the Benil players because as soon as the final second ticked off. You could see the emotions, they dropped to their knees because they knew that was a title that slipped away from their fingertips. Had they won that match in the elimination round, outright champion sila. But San Beda showing the heart of a champion. 25 championships in football is no joke. And shout out to everybody who went there from the Bedan side. Punung puno yung stadium. And shout out to the guy who was doing the live streaming as well. Yep. Uh Actually, that was it. Dun sa sa Bedan anong na community, kasi it's a big deal. Especially, it's not only basketball na pride and joy ng mga old school Bedan sa. It's the football competition, and hats off to all the coaching staff and for the Benil Blazers then for really having a chokehold on the regular season. Nakataon lang umabot in extra time. So congratulations again, San Beda 25th crown in football and a. Triumphant return of NCAA football as well. Ito yung excited kami kasi unti-unti na bumabalik yung mga sports natin, lalong-lalo na yung mga natigil during the pandemic. You know, this this gives hope to our athletes, syempre, na magpapatuloy yung mga karera nila. Hopefully, more teams will be participating. A lot more uh, schools will be activating their programs, not only in football, in badminton, yeah. in uh, lawn tennis, clay tennis, yung mga iba pang events. And uh, Taekwondo, we saw it na pumipick up na ulit. And it's a hot tip sa ating mancom and all of those people that makes the competition possible. All right. So there you go. Some of the sports 
dito sa NCAA Season 99 so far na bagay ko Chammer. Hindi pa natin pinapakita. Abangan niyo po yung feature ng lawn tennis din. Mm, I think we have a feature on that. Huh. Well, and Table beach tennis. volleyball. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So do stay tuned to the show because we have a lot in store for you dito sa Game On. And speaking of Game On, Marts. Okay, so <laughs> this is the inevitable. Just like Thanos. <laughs> In the Avengers, we gotta talk about the podcast again. I mentioned earlier, it was just announced on the social media accounts of GMA News, GMA Sports, Game On, the podcast. Much awaited. Yep, we I think started talking about this sometime in 2023. Finally, it's here and very exciting times for us, especially and GMA, because meron na silang sports related podcast of course that's gonna be us that's the pressure is on us to make it substantial to make it meaty and to make it interesting for our listeners and viewers but you guys could catch it very very soon in different platforms google pod apple podcast spotify youtube and facebook na gma news and gma sports so those are just some of the platforms that you guys could catch our podcast. Episode 1 is coming very, very soon. Okay, gentlemen, some expectations on the podcast. We're having fun here on the show, but you just can't imagine how much more fun uh, we're going to have when we start on the podcast. Okay, coach. Uh, well, Anton. Here's the thing. Para sa atin tatlo kasi, 15 minutes is not enough. So, ngayon, mas mahaba na yung oras natin para makipagkwentuhan sa isa't isa and to also share our thoughts with all of the sports fans who tune in, not just the NCAA, but in other sports as well. So, aside from the conversations that we will be having and the guests that we will be inviting on the show, we want to hear from you guys also. Please do slide into our DMs. Let us know who you want to... Who you want us to guest, and if you have any questions as well, Coach Hammer is shaking his head. Okay. You're stop okay. acting like it's not a normal thing it, 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 because sliding is a very normal uh, thing in this day and age, hold my on. friend. So I'm serious about uh, that. Through. Please do throw in your questions now, and let us know. Marts, yes. L let me <laughs> chime in first. The way you said that felt like you're an expert in sliding. Bagong presidente ng Team Marupok. <laughs> okay. by, by the way, this is not one of the topics we're going to be talking about no, 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 no. in the podcast. Uh, Yun nga, uh, kung meron kayong gustong uh, <laughs> mga topics, topics, topics mga or guests, namin. Yes. please do sa amin let us know. And also yung mga questions na gusto uh -huh. nyong itanong True. sa inyong mga paboritong sports personalities, do feel free to throw them at us. Oh, exactly. Tsaka yung mga guests naman natin, it's not about them per se, it's about the topics that we would be discussing. Kung ano mga pressing concerns, yung mga things that are happening in and around sports. So, it's a little bit uh, on the deeper dive of things para ma-discuss ma pa natin at mas mahimay pa natin on a longer and a paano natin ito? Uh, in a different platform. That's right. Okay. Exciting po yan podcast. Di pa natin na-announce kung kailan magda-drop yung first episode natin which is going to be an intro episode uh, of Game On the Podcast. So, abangan nyo po yan mga kapuso. Again, do not forget to subscribe, follow our social media platforms, our social media accounts for some updates on the podcast. Pero ngayon, binanggit na natin different sports. Wait lang. Different sports uh, already done here in Season 99. One of them was the Beach Volleyball Tournament, which happened back in Subic earlier this year. So let's check out some of the highlights here. The NCAA Beach Volleyball Tournament returned to the Sandcourt Subic Bay Freeport Zone where old and new heroes rose to the occasion for Season 99. It was a success. I'm happy, I'm happy. It's a success in a way that we were able to bring back the high school division and we were thinking of putting a girls division next year. In the women's division, Colegio de San Juan de Letran successfully defended their title after beating San Beda University 21-16, 21-16 in the finals. The Lady Knights went unbeaten in the event, winning all of their 11 matches throughout the competition. 
Lara Mae Silva, who won the title alongside Chamberlain Cunada in Season 98, celebrated anew, this time with talented reinforcements, sisters Gia Marcel and Jogi Makila. Yung sabi lang po ni Coach sa akin, parang one game at a time lang po kami, tsaka mag-enjoy lang po sa loob ng court, tsaka wala pong pressure. Kung wala naman pong sekreto, siguro sinagalan po namin every game, tsaka tinrabaho po lahat-lahat ng game. Tinrabaho na lang po namin yung pagkasanalo po. Gia Marcel Makila took home three awards, namely Freshman of the Year, Rookie of the Year, and Most Valuable Player. Meanwhile, Letran's Michael Inoferio was named Coach of the Year. This was Letran's third overall women's beach volleyball title in league history. Over in the men's division, the University of Perpetual Health System Dalta also went back-to-back -back after repelling Mapua University in the championship match 21-19-21-13. The Altas once again unleashed the powerful tandem of Louis Ramirez and Jefferson Marapo as they overwhelmed the Cardinals' duo of St. Marlo Hamisola and RJ Ramos. In Season 98, Marapo took home the MVP trophy. This time around, it was Ramirez who was recognized as the most valuable player. Nakaka-pressure po pero yun nga, lumabas yung pagiging champion team namin ng kasama ko. Malakas yung pakiramdam namin na kaya-kaya namin mag-champion. Uh, Naibigyan namin yung dapat ikaw ng bawat isa. Na hindi namin inunasan, uh, lahat ng team sobrang prepared. Na. Para sa akin po nakaka-proud po na nanalo ulit kami dahil yun sa, yun sa akin po kasi last playing year ko na. So yun, uh, all out po kahit ano maya. Sobrang lang yung bagay po para sa akin. Maraming opportunity pero magiging wise mo na kung saan mapupunta. Perpetual's Maki Carino was named Coach of the Year, while James Harold Marasigan of the Benil Blazers was hailed as the Rookie of the Year. With their victory, the Perpetual Altas are now owners of four NCAA Men's Beach Volleyball Championships, trailing only Benil who has a league-best seven titles. The juniors division saw a finals match that went to a deciding third set as Emilio Aguinaldo College battled LPU. In the end, EAC's Alijan Abdian and Dwayne Iverson Alin Alin triumphed over LPU's Rodan Aguirre and Ace Van Roboel Blanco 21-17, 16-21, 15-10. Sobrang kaba ko po noon, lalo na nung medyo nadadown na po kami. Pero syempre, strategy pa rin po. Then, teamwork, enjoyment, communication lang din po. Pagkaya din po ng turo ng head coach sa amin, si Coach Rod. Malaking thank you po sa kanya dahil tinuro niya sa amin yung lahat ng skills na natutunan namin, lahat ng pagkakamali namin na nag nagawa namin ng tama. First year ko po na makasali sa Manila, makatungtong dito. Sobrang overwhelmed po. Masaya din para sa team, para sa school. Alijan Abdian was named Rookie of the Year and Most Valuable Player, while Rod Palmero received his award for Coach of the Year after guiding EAC to a record fourth Juniors Beach Volleyball title, the most in NCAA history. I'm happy that not only one school dominated, there was a perpetual for the men's, that ran for the women, and uh, made a new team, Aya, for the boys. Thank you for all those who participated, who supported, those who lost. Better luck next time. The winners, congratulations. And that, mga kapuso, was your NCAA Season 99 Beach Volleyball Recap. Back to back for Letran and Perpetual. Congratulations for Perpetual in the men's division and the Letran Lady Knights in the women's division. Very competitive. Kakamiss eh, no? Kakamiss. Oh. So big. <laughs> Nung 98, nandun tayo for a week. But again, these uh, two, uh, two programs, talking about the Letran Lady Knights and the Perpetual Altas, took care of business. Na hopefully, they can bring that success, which uh, Perpetual did last season. Yung Lady uh, Knights uh, faced a lot of injuries, but... Of course, yan yung gusto nila, jumping off in the springboard, going into the indoor volleyball season. Big shout out to Lara Mae Silva, back-to-back -back champion in beach volleyball this time with new partners. Last year, it was Chamberlain Cunada. So this year, nag-adjust si Lara Mae. And also, big shout out to Coach Michael Inoferio because we know he is stepping aside to give way to Coach Oliver Almadro who will now coach the indoor team of Letran. So, exciting times yep. for the Letran Lady Knights, Marts. Yeah. That's right. Oh, big thumbs up dun sa bucket hat ni Coach Rod Palmero. Doon ko lang na-realize, oh. no? Coach Rod is the face of, of EAC oh, volleyball. volleyball. Men's, women's, beach volley to the ju pati juniors. Juniors. Na, so, human's job. Okay. 
dun sa lineup ng Letran Lady Knights. If you guys were able to catch the beach volleyball action, you saw a sneak peek of their newest piece in the TMC, Makilang. Yun yung pumalit kay Chak Cunyada. Siya rin po yung lumahok sa uh, beach volleyball team nila and will be making her debut in the uh, indoor scene very, very soon. Ang inaabangan ko dito. So, last season, we had a lot of clips of Coach Roger Gurayev. Quotable quotes. This season, ang inaabangan ko rin, dagdag natin Coach Oliver Almadro and his reactions, his quotes to the ladies, especially in tight games. I, I fondly remember one coverage I had. Kasama ko si Noreen Go. Noreen, if you're watching, miss you. Um, I said, yung mga huddle ni Coach Oliver Almadro, parang buffet. You get everything. Ah, yeah, though. Yeah. You get quotable quotes. You get sermon. You get, you get flowery words. Everything. History, strategy, completo yan. Basta si Coach O. Mm. So I'm so excited for him. And uh, lahat ng mga mahilig sa social media, be ready because you're gonna see a lot of Coach Oliver Almadro, mm. lalo na sa ating reels. That's right. Oh, Coach this Oliver. Guy should, should be getting into the real game as well. I know. Coach Oliver, former player. Let's not go there. Let's not go there. Pero kaabang abang po yan. Ano, a few things uh, to look forward to in season 99 of your volleyball tournament. We got one more game in the men's division. Will happen in a few minutes. It's going to be perpetual versus JRU. Ladies and gentlemen, maraming salamat po sa inyong pagtutok right here on the show. Coach Hammer, and our final few words before we say goodbye in the first episode of Game On this volleyball season. All I can say is the long wait is finally over. Day one, match day number one of NSA Volleyball is finally here. Great to be back and we are back in a big way because not only are we covering volleyball, we also have our <laughs> Game On podcast coming very soon. And of course, Spotify, Apple Music, YouTube, all, all, our, all platforms that you listen your podcasts hmm. to, please, Wait for the first episode to drop. Okay, mga kapuso, maraming salamat sa inyong pagtutok, sa inyong paborito sports and entertainment show. This has been Game, Game On! on!